and welcome back to this week's episode. This week we are going to be learning about the creed. Have you guys heard about the creed? Do you guys know what is meant by the creed? Bambinos, we say it every single day when we recite our rosaries and also other prayers too. We say the Apostles' Creed. And through this creed, we are proclaiming our faith, our Catholic faith, and what we all believe in as a universal church. So today, we will be learning what is the importance of the creed and also where and how it all began. So before we get started, let's go and learn our Bible words. Are you guys ready? Come on, Bambinos. Let's do this together. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and learn our Bible words. Hi, Bambinos. You are most welcome to this new Bambino program. And this week, we are going to reflect about the Apostles' Creed, the I Believe. I hope you know this prayer by heart. This is our basic faith, the foundation of our Christian faith. And if you learn this, the whole creed, you know whole Christianity, the whole Christian theme. So therefore, this is very important for all of us to know this I believe in God, I believe in God the creed, the Apostles' Creed. So that is the foundation of Christianity. So as you are joining in this episode of the Bambino program, Today we are going to learn this Bible passage that is Gospel of Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. So this is the word of God that we are going to learn. The word of God goes like this. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So that is the word of God. Just learn by heart this word of God and always remember this is our mission mission to go out and make disciples in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit god bless you bambinas now that we have learned our bible verse we must go and listen to our story actually this is not a story Remember what I said, we are going to be learning about the creed. We must learn where it all began and what is the creed. So Bambinas, let's do this together and let's go and learn about the creed. Are you guys ready? Are you guys excited? Come on and join me and let's get this story time started. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and listen to our story. Hello, Bambinos. How are you doing today? Today, we are going to be learning about the Apostles' Creed. Now, many of you may have heard about the Apostles' Creed or even heard someone say it. But, Bambinos, what really is it? Well, today we're gonna learn what it is, why it was made, 
And who made it? The Apostles' Creed is the proclamation of our faith. It talks about the Father, the Son, who is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Bambinos, do you know what those three beings are called? Yes, that's right. They are called the Holy Trinity. The Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is three persons into one. Now you may have heard someone talk about this or say it, but the Holy Trinity is a very important aspect of our faith. Now, the Apostles' Creed is a very important aspect in our lives. In a way, it is a symbol of our faith. The beginning of the Apostles' Creed is, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Wait a minute, where, have, where else have I heard that from? Oh yes, I've heard it from the first commandment. I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other God besides me. Now, if you think about it, the commandments and the Apostles' Creed are very similar. However, the Apostles' Creed tells us what we should believe. There is no other God apart from the one true God. But where was it made? Well, the, Apostle, the Apostles' Creed was made in Gaul. I've never heard of that place. What about you, Bambinos? Have you heard of Gaul? Well, you might not have heard of Gaul, but you would have heard of the name that Gaul is now. Nowadays, Gaul is called Switzerland. Now you might have heard of that place. Yes, it is in Europe. Well, when was it made? The Apostles' Creed was made in the second century, but then it was only being used in the liturgical rite in the Latin Mass in the eighth century. But why was it made? There have been many conspiracy theories about why the Apostles' Creed was made. Many people say one thing and the other people say other things and it goes on and on and on. But here are a few theories. Some people might say, well, in the first century, there were many heretics and they would go around and wait a minute, what is a heretic? Well, a heretic is someone that has opposing beliefs and teaches opposing things towards a different religion. Well, these heretics would go around and spread fake gospels and they would lie to people. And then the apostles had to have a way to make sure that everyone was believing the right thing. So they said, wait a minute, we should make a creed and call it the Apostles' Creed. And it would contain of many beliefs and everyone had to believe these and not believe what the heretic said. And that was one of the theories. But another one might have been, well, in the first century, when many people in the entirety of the region where Jesus lived, wanted to convert to Christianity. And they couldn't just convert all that simply. They needed to know something about Christianity. So there would have been some specific creeds, like I believe in one God, I believe in Jesus Christ, I believe in the Holy Spirit, and there would have been many creeds. And one of the creeds would make them become a Christian. And the bishop or the priest at the day of their baptism would say, what do you believe? And the person that was being baptized would have to recite the creed. And then after a while, the apostles put all the creeds together and made the apostles creed. But you may know that, oh look, this is the apostles creed, but when are we ever going to have to use it? Well, the Apostles' Creed is used in many forms of prayer. The Apostles' Creed is used in the Holy Mass right after the Eucharistic prayer. It is also used in the Holy Rosary and the Divine Mercy. And it can be very useful for you to learn it off by heart. Well, this could be useful because when you are going to pray, you could tell someone or you could, if someone comes to you and asks, what is your faith about? you could tell them and you could remember the Apostles' Creed and reply to them based on what you believe. And, oh wait, I forgot to say something. Did you know, Bambinos, that the Apostles' Creed was made by the 12 Apostles? It might kind of sound weird, but it was. The Apostles' Creed was made by Simon, Andrew, James, John, who were the Sons of Thunder, which was Jesus' nickname for them. Thaddeus Bartholomew, 
Thomas, James, and James and Matthias. These are the 12 apostles who made the Apostles' Creed. Now, Bambinos, to end this all, you could say a fun fact to your friend. Did you know that Switzerland used to be called Gaul? Now, Bambinos, with thankfulness in our heart, let us say the Apostles' Creed, recognizing how hard the 12 apostles must have worked to put all of this together to give us a prayer which, where we proclaim our faith. The prayer is, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead and descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father, the Almighty. From then again, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgivenesses of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Goodbye, Bambinos. Bambinos, now that we have listened to our story, we must go and do some art and craft. This art and craft, we remember the creed. We remember what I believe, what you believe, what we believe as one Catholic Church. And remember the prayer? It is, I believe in God. So, to remind ourselves about this prayer, we are going to be doing a special art and craft. Let's do this, Bambinos. Let's go and get our creative fingers ready and do some art and craft. Are you guys ready? Let's do this together, Bambinos. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Hello Bumpinos, welcome to the art and craft section. So today I'm going to make something so interesting. I want to know, do you guys remember what is the first line of our Apostles' Creed? Yeah, it's I believe in one God. So today's art and craft section is something related to that. It's actually an art which showing a hand creed, something like pointing to our Apostles' Creed. So we'll go to make that one. Yeah. Come on. So Bumpinos, for making our hand creed, we just need a two piece of paper, a pair of scissors, some paint, a glue and some glitter. So the first step is take a piece of paper and just place our hand on top of that. Take a pen and draw the outline of our hand. And next is... Bumpinos, now we have done the cutting in the shape of our hand. The next step is we need to paint it. So Bumpinos, next we need to paint the borders of this hand. Just take some paint. So Bumpinos, now we have painted our hand, now we are going to write inside our hand, it's our 
hand. The next step is we need to color this like we are adding some more colors. Coloring this one. Yeah, and the next step we are going to put some glitter inside this. For this, add some glue and we'll put some glitters. And then we'll paint one more color over this. Paint it outside the green. That's okay. Good. So bumpy nose. Now our hand is almost ready. Now the next step is we need to take another paper and write our creed. So just take another color paint and write. So bumpy nose. We have painted and we wrote I believe in one God. So the next step is we are making our hand just pointing towards. We need to fold the three fingers on the opposite side. Just paste here. Yeah. Take our creed and just paste the creed and put some glue here. This thing here. Pinos, now we have pasted our hand on our paper. We'll add some water for this line. Take some paint and put some water for this. Yeah. Our hand creed is almost ready. The Bambinos, now we have studied how to make a hand creed. So you all guys try to do this and send in all your works to our email. So till next episode, bye bye Bambinos. Wow, what an amazing artwork. Now I will never forget the Apostles' Creed because every single time I look at my hand, I will remember that I believe in one God. What an amazing artwork. Now let's go and listen to our saint. This saint is an amazing saint. In fact, he is known as the Great Saint. Are you guys excited to know who it is? Let's go and Listen and learn about our saint. You guys ready? Let's do this together, Bambinos. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and listen to our saint. Hi, Bambinos. I hope you're enjoying watching this episode. So in this little section, we're going to talk about this week's Saint of the Week. This week's Saint of the Week is Saint Basil the Great. It's not the Basil who we all know and love from the Vine Retreat Center. No, it's not him. It's Saint Basil of Caesarea. Well, Saint Basil was born in the region of Caesarea in Cappadocia around 325 years after Jesus was born. And he was born into a very holy family. He was born to his parents, Basil the Elder, who he's named after, as well as Emilia, also known as Emily. Now, his mother, Emily, was a saint, and she is still known as a saint in the Roman Catholic Church. His grandmother, Macrina, is also a saint in the Roman Catholic Church. Not to mention his older sister, also named Macrina, another saint. His brother, another saint. His other brother, another saint. And you can see where I'm going with this. He was born into a very holy family, and they are reputed for being saints in the Roman Catholic Church. So, he was very well educated. He studied in Constantinople, and he was very good friends with a young man that we now know as Gregory the Theologian and he's very famous for some of his work. Well, Bambinos, we can say that he was very well educated. He did, after all, study in Constantinople, which was a very big deal. And he was very good friends with Gregory the Theologian, which we now know has done some amazing work. Well, what did St. Basil the Great do though? He left behind all of his worldly careers and he decided to live a holy life. He decided to live a life of sacrifice, 
of self-denial and to follow God. And that is truly amazing Bambino. He could have been such a great man in the eyes of the world, but yet he chose to stand for God. And as a part of that holy life, he was inspired by his older sister Macarena, who is now a saint in the Roman Catholic Church. So what did he do? He went and he visited the monks in Egypt, he visited the monks in Syria, in Palestine, and also in Mesopotamia. And when he had finally finished, he came back to Caesarea. But once he came back, he again left, and he went to a hermitage where his mother and his sister were living their own holy lives. And remember, they are saints in the Roman Catholic Church as well. So, Bambinos, after he had gone on this quest to meet the monks from different parts of the land, he decided to come back to Caesarea. But something didn't quite feel right, so he left again and he went to a hermitage where his mother and his sister lived and they were living holy lives of their own. And it was here that he wrote some of his greatest works. Now, St. Basil the Great was known to be very eloquent, spoke very well. He could also write magnificently. And some of his most holy works are about the mysteries of the Holy Trinity. And we can link that back to the theme of this week, that is, the Creed. He also wrote about the mysteries of creation and about how God the world. And because of the way he wrote things, He's now known as the revealer of heavenly things and the great, which is why we call him Saint Basil the Great. In the year 370 AD, the bishop of the sadly died. And so there was an election to see who could get the role of the bishop. And as you can imagine, Saint Basil the Great was elected bishop of the region. He took the role of being a bishop very seriously. He had two main aims, to serve Jesus Christ in everything that he did and to make sure that the church grew. And he was willing to do it till the very end, even if it meant losing his life, giving up everything. Although he didn't die a martyr, he died a natural death. He can still be considered a martyr because he was willing to sacrifice everything that he had in his life to make sure that these were done. Now, Bambinos, at the time, his position was very critical. There was the Emperor of Rome, Emperor Valens, the Epoch of the East, Modestus, and the Arians. They all wanted to have him under their control because if they had him under their control, they could control the church. But Bambinos, what did St. Basil the Great do? He was willing to stand for Christ even at this time. In fact, there was a moment in time where he was in front of the epoch of the East, Modestus. And Modestus was shocked at the audacity that St. Basil the Great had because he was standing for Christ. Modestus said he had never seen anyone who had spoken to him as St. Basil the Great had. Now we know St. Basil the Great was very eloquent, but this was a very important ruler. And what did St. Basil the Great say? Why are you shocked? Well, perhaps you've never seen a bishop speak before. Now Bambinos, at the time, Arianism was at its strongest. Well, what is Arianism, you ask? The Arians believe that Jesus Christ was created by God. They don't believe that he is God. They believe that he's a bit more than man, but not God. We, the Roman Catholic, as the creed states, we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he's equal to God, that he's consubstantial with the Father. So, of course, St. Basil the Great didn't agree with that. But Emperor Valens and Modestus, they were with the Arians. Eventually, Emperor Valens had to come back to St. Basil the Great. His son was severely, severely sick and he was about to die. He wanted in exile or at the very least dead. So what did he do? He went to St. Basil the Great and he pleaded with him to pray for his son. Now St. Basil the Great agreed, but he made a promise with him. He said, I will pray for your son if you baptize him in the church when his health is restored. Now Emperor Valens agreed to this and St. Basil the Great prayed and his son's health was restored. So St. Basil the Great kept his part of the promise, but Emperor Valens didn't. He baptized his son with the Arians, the ones who believe that Jesus isn't God. And what happened soon after? His son died. Now, Emperor Valens was so upset with St. Basil the Great that he said that he be banished. But as he was signing the document, his pen broke. That's fine, he got another pen. He was about to sign the document again. And again, his pen broke. A third time, he called for another pen. And yet again, his pen broke. He got so frustrated that he tore up the document and St. Basil Great was set free. A few years later, St. Basil the Great sadly passed away. He died a natural death and he was only the age of 49, but he went to be with the Lord. So Bambinos, I hope you've learned a little bit about St. Basil the Great. I hope you also remember that he's the patron saint of the region of Cappadocia in Turkey, of hospital administrators and reformers. And we celebrate his feast day in the Western world on January the 2nd whereas in the Eastern world is January the 4th. Bambinos, remember, we're all called to be great. We're all called to be saints. And remember, Jesus loves you. That's all for this week, Bambinos. I'll see you next week. Bambinos, now that we have listened to a great saint, you know what this inspired me? It inspired me to be a great saint. You know, Basil was able to become Basil the Great. Hopefully one day I could become Carol the Great. And listen, what can you guys become? Bambinos, 
let the earth become great just like St. Basil did and we can transform this world. Bambinos, now let's stretch out our hands and our legs and let's get moving. Are you guys ready? Let's do this together, Bambinos. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and dance. Praise the Lord, my lovely Bambinos. Bambinos, today's topic is the creed. And I'll give you a small example on today's topic. You might have seen on TV when we watch this football matches, when the countries are playing, the international football matches, the footballers before the start of the match, they will be standing like this. Most of them are standing like this during the national anthem. And during this national anthem of the country, most of the players will, you'll see them either crying and they will be like, or some of them will scream and shout and sing the national anthem of the respective country. And the people who have come to watch the match also, they will scream and shout and sing the national anthem. Now my lovely children, if all these footballers and all these people can sing the national anthem so loudly in such a respectable manner, with so much of love in their heart for the country. Why do we Christians say the creed, the national anthem of Christianity, of the Catholic Church like this? I believe in one God, the Father, Almighty, Creator of Heaven, and another, I believe in Jesus Christ. Yes, most of us during Mass also we say like that only. Oh, we're like, I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Creator. No, my lovely Bambi knows this this people who sing the national anthem during the football match and any other time, they are singing it just for the country. But we, the profession of our faith, the creed, we are professing our faith in the one true God who made everything, who made the heaven, who made the earth, who made you, who made me. And for him, we don't even care. We don't, we don't say it with so much of love. Not only you, even me, I also, I'll accept it, even me. Many times I've just said it for the sake of saying. But from today, Bambi knows you and I, from today, let's make a decision that we are going to say the I believe, the creed. During Mass or whenever we are praying at home, the Rosary or the Divine Mercy, from today, let us say it with so much of love in our hearts because let us realize it. Let us be aware that we are saying it not for some Prime Minister. We are not saying it for some celebrity or some uh, some uh, rich man, richest man in the world or anything. We are saying it for the one true God who made heaven and earth, who made everything in it. From today onwards, Bambinos, let us say the creed that I believe with love, with zeal, with emotions in our heart for our Lord Jesus Christ. Bambinos, now let us sing and let us profess our faith and let us tell the whole world that we believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Bambinos, here we go. Spirit 
believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, I got a three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus, I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, I got a three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again For I believe in the name of Jesus Bambinos, now that we have listened to our story Done some art and craft Learned about our saint And done some dancing Let's go and receive our final blessing Hi Bambinos, you are most welcome and we thank you uh, for joining for this episode and I am sure you must have enjoyed this episode this week about the creed, the basic foundation of our Christian faith, Catholic faith. So learn this and understand as much as possible because it's a huge prayer, big prayer, but in a short period of time in this um, Bambino program, we try to explain whatever that you could understand. So anyway, may God bless you. We are going to pray the final prayer. Abba Father, we pray for all these children who have joined today. Bless them abundantly and give them the faith, the faith in the Holy Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, help them to believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, their personal God. Bless all of them and cover them in your mantle and protect them, lead them to the right faith and the true faith. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Bambinos, are you guys ready for our quiz round? So I'm going to ask you five questions and I'm going to give you 10 seconds to come up with the answer. And I'm going to give you four options. Are you guys ready and excited for your question number one? I hope you've been listening. The first question is, what is the Bible verse for the week? Option number A, John 2, 4. Was it Matthew chapter 12, verse 18? Matthew 28, 19 or John 12, 10? 10 seconds on the clock, Bambinos. Bambinos, the correct answer is Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. So well done you if you got that correct. The second question is, who created the creed? Was it the Pope, the 12 apostles? We don't know who created it or St. Peter. 10 seconds on the clock. Actually, Bambinos, we believe, according to tradition, that the 12 apostles, inspired by the Holy Spirit, came up with the Apostles' Creed. So well done you if you got that correct. Question number three. The third question is, which country was St. Basil born? Was it A. Turkey? Or is it Morocco? Egypt? Or Spain? Bambinas, 10 seconds on the clock. Bambinas, the correct answer is Turkey. He, St. Basil the Great, was born in Turkey. Question number four. What is the Apostles' Creed also known as? Is it way of life rules of faith the truth or the rules 10 seconds on the clock the correct answer is the rules of faith so 
In the creed, we are proclaiming our faith, the rules, what we believe in, how we are to live our life. So, the creed is also known as rules of faith. The fifth and the final question. Was St. Basil a hermit, a monk, a priest, or a follower of Christ? 10 seconds on the clock. Bambinos, the correct answer is he was a monk of course. So well done you if you got that correct. So Bambino, that is the end of our episode and we hope that you enjoyed our episode. Before I get going, I must set you this week's challenge. This week's challenge, it is to make your very own I Believe in God drawings. So we love to hear from you and we love to hear your feedback to our program so please send in all your feedback comments and also your precious artwork to our email address and our email address is divinekids at divineuk.org so till next time bambinos bye bye and god bless Ready? Yeah. To see it? Yeah. To hear it? Uh huh. To mix it, move it, make it. Here we go. B A M B I N O. Bambino. Let's go, Bambino. Oh, Bambino! Let's go, Bambino!